Today, you and I are going to go over four things that can cause a pro wrestling career to plateau. I'm Mike Quackenbush. This is Till We Make It. And today I want to talk about some things which commonly cause pro wrestlers' careers to hit a plateau and then stagnate. And I want to load this information into your brain so that as you continue down your path toward pro wrestling success and you see those potholes and pitfalls ahead of you, you can navigate and stay clear of them at every turn. The first thing that will cause your career to plateau in professional wrestling is when you stop seeking out matches against people that will make you come up a level. So, what do I mean by this? You could choose to always be wrestling people whose overall ability is a level beneath yours. And that could be performatively, mechanically, or structurally. You choose to work with people that are a level below you. Now, sometimes we are assigned to do that. We all do that. We have to help the next generation come up a level. But if that's all you're doing and you are never being challenged to move your game up a level, you will stagnate. You will stay in the same place. You will hit that plateau. So you must actively seek out those kinds of bookings and opportunities where you'll be challenged by a wrestler of a higher level so that you have to come up. And sometimes it can be very comfortable or easy to wrestle against those on the same level as you. There is a sense of familiarity and there is a sense that you know exactly how it's going to go. But by staying comfortable, you will not grow. You've got to get out of that comfort zone that wrestling someone of equal ability creates and get a little uncomfortable. Outside of that comfort zone is where your best growth is waiting for you. The second common thing I think contributes to stagnation in the career of a professional wrestler is ineffective promotion. We are all called on to deliver marketing messages, promotional messages, promos. And the purpose of a promotional message is to promote a sale. It might be of a ticket. It might be of a pay-per-view. It might be a subscription to a service. Whatever that sale is that you are promoting, when the promotion becomes ineffective, the wrestler hits a plateau. And here's the most common mistake I see all across social media. It's marketing messages that fail to include a call to action. And a call to action is succinct and it is direct. It sounds like order today, buy now, get yours here, don't wait, sign up at the link. Those are calls to action. When the calls to action disappear, the promotional effort weakens. And as that promotional effort continues to weaken, a plateau begins to happen. You can avoid this by making sure your marketing messages always include a strong but succinct call to action. And when it lacks a call to action, it would be akin to walking on to the dealership lot and seeing all the brand new cars that are out for sale. And a salesman comes out from within the building, saddles up beside you and says, hey, how are you? How's your day today? What do you think of the weather? Well, I'm so-and-so. Oh, and then just walks off. They never ask you to buy the car. They never ask you, what kind of car would you like to see? They never say, could I get you to take a test drive? They just came out, made some small talk, and then buggered off. But you've got to make the sale. And that's what the call to action does. It instructs whomever sees the promotional message to take action and calls them to do it. The third thing that happens to cause wrestling careers to plateau is when the wrestler in question begins to value the wrong things. They're focusing on the wrong things to get their career to go where they want it to go. So for the purpose of this, I want to call on my good fortune to have witnessed a tryout camp being conducted by the industry leader and to share with you some of the qualities they valued most. So if you picture yourself wrestling for one of the major organizations, it's important to focus on the right things. Otherwise, your career could stagnate. 
And what are those things they're looking for? Number one is telegenic appearance. Do you know that phrase? It means that you look good on screen. On a television screen, you would have photogenic appearance, telegenic. Do you cultivate a great telegenic appearance? Because that is one of the most valuable skills a professional wrestler can have if they want to move up to the major leagues. And if that is your career goal, then that's something you're going to need to cultivate. What else besides telegenic appearance is valuable at the very top of our industry? The number two thing is coachability. Can you listen to instruction from an agent, producer, backstage hand, or coach? Incorporate it into what you're doing immediately and then deliver the new result? When you can do that, you do demonstrate that you are coachable and coachability is exceptionally valuable right now all across professional wrestling. If you're not working to hone that skill, it's possible that you might be focusing on the wrong things. And an increasing initiative amongst the industry leaders is to find talent that is multilingual. They speak more than one language. So if you're not learning a foreign language and you don't imagine what the application might be, well, it could be the exact thing that helps you to get a job with a major league organization over all the other applicants who only speak one language. So if you want to make sure your career continues on that upward trajectory to ultimately achieve your goals and avoid ending up on a plateau, give some consideration to whether or not you are focusing on the right things to get you there. Those exact things I just discussed, telegenic appearance, coachability, and multilingualism. You might imagine that the most important thing for a professional wrestler to know what to do is wrestle, but the truth is there's all these other skills that require focus too that are going to help you make it to the top. Last in this discussion, but definitely not least, is this important point of view. Make sure you're competing with the right person, and the right person is yourself. You are always competing against yourself. If you imagine you are competing with everyone else, you're just going to get bitter. When you're always competing against yourself, that's when you get better. You are constantly trying to improve on the version of yourself you were in the last match, in the last quarter, in the last year, in the last era of your career. As long as you are always competing against yourself, that is the best path to improvement, and it's also a great way to avoid stagnation. So if you are hearing this as an idea and wondering, Mike, how do I compete with myself? Well, what about this? When you're at the gym, could you beat the number of reps you were doing a month ago? Or what about the total number of pounds you were lifting a quarter ago? Or the total number of minutes you spent doing cardio last year? You could compete with yourself by beating those numbers time and time again. Or what about when you're in the ring? Could you make it to 30 minutes without feeling blown up in a singles match? Well, what about a month ago or a quarter ago? Where were you at a year ago in terms of your in-ring performance? There's no shortage of ways in which you can measure your own success and your improvement by only competing against yourself. And if the way in which you wish to compete with yourself is getting a better reaction from every audience you perform in front of or telling better stories in the ring, well, I've got the secret weapon that you need to load into your arsenal. It is called Seven Keys to Becoming a Better Performer, a book for fellow pro wrestlers that I wrote and you can have. It's over on Amazon.com where the audiobook can be found at Audible.com. It's loaded with great information about the performative and structural elements of professional wrestling.